Thanks for clicking on to this special video today looking at the 2024 Atlantic hurricane season forecast. Before we continue with the video, be sure to hit that like button, share with your friends and family and subscribe to the channel. So in today's video, we'll look at the Vogan's 2024 Atlantic hurricane season forecast. We'll look into the details as to why I've uh, chosen a certain type of forecast and in tomorrow's video, we shall look at the May of uh, 2024 as well. So plenty of reason to stick around and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. So let's get right into it. This is the first time in a few years I've released a hurricane season forecast. And this is based on the developing El Nino, or La Nina, should I say, and uh, the very, very warm North Atlantic sea surface temperature profile. El Ninos tend to enhance wind shear within the mid upper levels of the uh, tropical Atlantic. La Ninas tend to reduce wind shear and the environment overall tends to be more favorable for tropical cyclone activity. What is considered normal? Well, it appears to be 14 named storms or normal, uh, of which we have seven hurricanes and three of those hurricanes become major that is on average the peak of the hurricane season tends to be around the i think it's september 10th actually is the traditional climatological peak of uh, the tropical hurricane season within the atlantic basin so i've actually got this is freely available on marfoganweather.com so you can check this out there will be a link in the description below today's video for this forecast the written form of the forecast anyway so there's plenty of information with regards to the tropics the averages what the records are and you know even for 2023 despite it being um an el nino year which tends to favor less activity in the tropical atlantic and more activity within the eastern as well as western portions of the the, the pacific basin but the reason why we had such a busy season, it was actually the fourth most named storms in a season for the Atlantic Basin, despite we had a strong El Nino in place. That is quite unusual, but it was probably offset. The El Nino was offset by the very warm waters of the tropical Atlantic, which then um, produced quite a, a significant amount of storms. The record being 2020, where there was 30 named storms, then you go back to the big season, the infamous season of 2005, where she delivered Katrina, Rita and Wilma. That was in 2005 and there was um, 28 named storms that season. These are the current sea surface temperatures globally as of the 17th of April. So you can see the cold waters now developing against the west coast of South America. That is your La Nina developing. Lots of cold waters below the surface uh, with strong easterly trade winds that tends to pull that cold water, subsurface water, up to the surface. And we are likely to see the increase in this cold water as we progress through the first half of the summer and really into the second half of the summer, I would expect to see an increase of, uh, of those cold waters extending from off the west coast of South America towards the central portion of the basin. So, like I said, El Ninos tend to be less favorable for tropical activity. La Ninas tend to be more favorable and you tend to have more systems, especially within the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico here. I don't have time to look through this in particular detail, unfortunately, but I will skim through the, the actual crux of the forecast itself. Um, and you can see here, this is off the CFSV2 sea surface temperature projections for the period between June through August. And you can see the, the La Nina signature starting to develop very warm Atlantic and cooling of the central and eastern equatorial Pacific. That is a favorable uh, sea state for enhanced activity within the uh, within the Atlantic Basin. You can see here as we move uh, between the period August through October, we're maturing that, that La Nina, the core of the coldest waters is now shifting towards Nino region 3, 4, and then out in the, towards the date line here. All the while, we've still got that warm signal in the Atlantic Basin. So there is plenty of reason to believe that at least these sea surface temperatures 
are conducive for favorable, favorable activity within the atmosphere. You can see the NMME model. This is uh, August through October. Uh, a little bit more of a robust La Nina seen by this model as opposed to the CFSV2. Still got that warm Atlantic basin, obviously. And you can see here the period between, um, that's supposed to be, this is June through August, and then August through October. You can see a very notable La Nina underway in the eastern and central Pacific and also the warm Atlantic Basin here. This is the precipitation forecast based on the CFS and the NMME model. You can see here that we've got enhanced rainfall uh, over the western basin to the east of the Leeward Islands through the Caribbean up into the Gulf of Mexico, especially up towards Florida here. We've got um, wetter than average conditions. So the model is seeing that uh, that enhanced activity within the tropics. This is the period between August through August through October, and we're continuing to extend that green further eastwards over the tropical portions of the Atlantic Basin here, uh, because as the, the season wears on, those waters actually warm up further. The atmosphere becomes more conducive as well, actually. You tend to find early in the season, so June and July, you've got more Saharan dust blown off, uh, off Africa out into the Atlantic. You've got less conducive activity that dusty air is not favorable for uh, cyclogenesis and uh, the production of tropical um, and sustaining of tropical systems off the the nme M -M -N -M -M -E model i'll get there that's a hard one to say isn't it uh, the june through august period you can see that the model is uh, seeing wetter than average conditions through the main development region up into the caribbean and the gulf of mexico the period between August through October, we increase that uh, potential for weather and average conditions here. Also looking at areas of rising and sinking air, so in other words, the Mount Julian Oscillation, you've got widespread sinking over the Pacific, you've got, um, you've got upward motion over the central and eastern portion of the Atlantic Basin through Africa and extending towards the, the western portions of the Indian Ocean Basin. That is important here that we have this upward motion really from the Arabian Sea through Africa and into the Atlantic Basin. What's important about that is the fact that when you've got upward motion within the Western Indian Ocean extending through Africa, that then means that we've got more robust African uh, monsoon season. You've got the area within the Ethiopian Highlands, which is the incubate, incubation region, the genesis region for tropical wave production. And when you've got a, a region that's favourable for uh, wave production over the eastern portions of the uh, of the East African equatorial region, you then have a, a better environment for tropical wave activity. Then the African easterly wave is a little bit more robust. That is the transporter that takes these waves that develop over eastern equatorial Africa to push westwards through the tropics and out into those warm 28 plus Celsius waters. And then basically that is the that that is the chain reaction that leads to big storms within the Atlantic Basin. They go westwards here. It depends on the strength of the subtropical ridge to the north of the tropics here. Uh, cooler waters to the north uh, within the, the mid the, the mid latitude region of the Atlantic and warmer water underneath tends to lead to a better wind oscillation within the, uh, the the Atlantic Basin itself. You tend to have a little bit more of a stronger mid-tropical uh, high, and then you've got more upward motion uh, further south within the main development region itself here. So I would like to see, if you want a big season that is in an, an active season, slightly cooler waters to the north, warmer waters within the deep tropics. That is a better environment for tropical cyclone production and sustaining these tropical systems here. Azores high tends to be a little bit stronger early in the season, then it hands off to its a uh, to its uh, its its brother or sister, <laughs> the, the the Bermuda high. That tends to become stronger as we progress through August and September. That is the wheel that then um, kind of transports and and guides these circulations into a particular region here. So let's have a look and see what the forecast is indicating. So the August through October period, the height of the season, you've still got widespread sinking uh, over the Pacific Basin. You've got widespread upward motion 
Indian Ocean through Africa and into the Eastern Atlantic Basin here. That is quite a La Nina type signal within the atmosphere. So obviously one thing is the ocean, another thing is the atmosphere. The two have to come together to become um, conducive for tropical cyclone activity. So it's all looking favourable for a big season. So how big is this season going to be? So the, the record being 30 named storms back in 2020, followed by 2005 with 28. This season, I am calling for between 23 and 26 named storms. Of those named storms, 13 to 16 will become hurricanes and seven will become major hurricanes, major being category three or stronger. So let's get into it. The above predicted numbers are based on the developing La Nina in the Pacific and less shear in the upper levels of the Atlantic and warmer than average sea surface temperatures. The, the SST profile of the Atlantic with cool over warm supports rising air within the main development region, while a little slightly stronger Bermuda high, which is sinking air, may be present over those cooler waters to the north, especially as the season enters August. The African wave train is likely to be energetic after what could be a dusty start to 2024. Developing La Ninas have been known to spread large amounts of sarin dust across the Atlantic in June and July, which suppresses activity somewhat. If this is the case, I expect this to die down as we progress into August and September. The 2024 season is expected to, to turn busy through August and September extending into early October. All of particular concern is the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico, which may have a lot of activity late August through mid-October, when ocean heat content peaks and the depth of 28 Celsius waters are deepest, enhanced by the loop current. So that's through the Caribbean into the Gulf of Mexico. That is where you've got very deep, warm waters, and that is perfect for maximizing the strength of tropical cyclones. I suspect majors category three or higher, which develop could focus on an area just to the east, northeast of the, 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 the leeward islands here. So that's to the east of the Caribbean. That's generally where the Caribbean almost meets the open Atlantic uh, through the Caribbean and up into the Gulf towards Texas or north of the islands towards Florida. So there's a kind of region here between generally Houston and, and Miami, where I'm particularly concerned this year, given the overall sea state and the, the atmospheric uh, favorability projected by the models here. The area, like I said, stretching from Houston to Miami is particularly vulnerable this year, and there may be two to four major hurricanes threaten this area. Now, it's a very large area, obviously, but I'm particularly honing in on this area through the Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, Central and Eastern Gulf, Florida, for example, may have uh, several threats from not only hurricanes, but major hurricanes at that as well. Um, strength and exact position of the subtropical middle Atlantic Ridge, so the, uh, the, the Bermuda to Azores High, which is critical for determining track and therefore intensity of systems roaming the Western Atlantic Basin. From the Carolinas to New York, including New England, and also up into the Canadian Maritimes, I suspect two to three systems could threaten from upper-end tropical storm to low-end Category 1 hurricane. So that is the area north of the Carolinas, up through New York, New England, and the Car Canadian Maritime region. I think there's going to be a few that break away from this main pack which will be focused caribbean gulf of mexico in the south america as well or central america sorry uh, that also could be the case and uh, i go on to say that from mexico's yucatan down through belize Honduras, and nicaragua the main threat likely comes late in the season so that's late october into november where one or two major threats are possible so that's my atlantic 2024 hurricane season forecast let me know in the comment section below what you think of this and like i said there is a link in 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 the, in the description below today's video that you can look at that for yourself in tomorrow's video i will have the may outlook so stay tuned for that and as i've already said be sure to like share and subscribe i do greatly appreciate your support enjoy the rest of your day bye for now